Misco Electric here in sunny Arizona. Today is Sunday, September 14th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. As I mentioned in last week's episode, IAA Mobility in Munich produced a lot of electric vehicle news, and I'll get to that, but first, I want to quickly touch on a few other electrification stories. This week, Oculus virtual reality pioneer and defense technology firm Andrel's CEO, Palmer Lucky, took delivery of the first non-employee production model of the single-seater Jetson 1 EV toll. After less than one hour of training, his first solo flight took place and the company shared a video documenting the experience on YouTube. This was chassis number three, but Jetson plans to deliver 100 aircraft before the end of the year. We've covered Jetson's aircraft on the current in the past, but this particular EV toll does not require a pilot license in the US and is considered an ultralight aircraft. It's capable of speeds over 60 miles per hour with a 20 minute runtime. It has a 1500 foot altitude ceiling and costs $130,000. More than 500 global reservations are publicly logged, but the company is accepting more for deliveries in 2027 for a deposit of $8,000. I'll include a link to the video and the company's website if you wanna check that out. While Jetson is flying high, Hyundai Group subsidiary Supernol appears to be grounded as their CEO and seasoned NASA director transitions out. Over the summer, Hyundai trimmed global staff, including 50 Supernol employees, bringing the headcount down to about 500. The team has paused work on their SA2 air taxi, which will not do them any favors in their race against American EV toll behemoths like Boeing's Whisk, Toyota's Joby, General Electric's Beta, and Archer Aviation, which is owned in part by Palmer Lucky's Andrel, along with Stellantis, Boeing, and BlackRock after a big funding round this June. We normally stick to electric transportation and directly related infrastructure, but there was some stationary storage news this week which could have major implications for the speed and cost of DC fast charging deployment in the US. This week, Tesla unveiled their new mega block 20 megawatt hour modular storage units from the Boring Tunnel in Las Vegas. Part of their presentation involved explaining familiar obstacles to high power project deployment. Those of you who follow the Misco Electric Industry Channel may have seen our interviews with leadership at Swiss Power Component Supplier, ABB, in which they told us the lead time for certain transformers and switch gear required for DC fast charging sites can be two to three years globally. We also published an interview with leadership at AK Power Solutions, a company that deploys factory assembled modular units containing the switchgear and transformers needed for high powered sites like DC fast chargers. That solution simplifies deployment, saving six to nine months on average at DC fast charging projects. The Tesla Megablock presentation was intended to drum up orders by utility companies and government buyers, but I couldn't help but notice the Megapack includes the transformers and switchgear, which are also required for electric vehicle DC fast charging sites. The equipment is housed in a single cabinet, similar to how AK Power Solutions does it. Moreover, Tesla casually mentioned that the Megablock features newly vertically integrated componentry. On the X platform, Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla has now gotten into the business of manufacturing transformers, putting them in direct competition with ABB, General Electric, Siemens, and Hitachi. The first 70,000 supercharger sites generally required very high dollar equipment from those companies installed by third parties on third party timelines. It seems logical to us that Tesla will utilize in-house transformers and switch gear to speed up and simplify future deployment of supercharger stations, bringing those costs in-house. Tesla charging leader Max DeZager recently began publicly promoting full supercharger site install and management service to third parties. Tesla already deploys DC fast charging much faster and at lower cost than competitors, but these innovations could result in more EV charging sites activated even sooner. Mercedes-Benz unveiled the all-new electric GLC at IAA. It's a midsize SUV built on the brand's new dedicated MB.EA EV platform. The GLC with EQ technology is based on 800 volt architecture and is equipped with a 94 kilowatt hour usable lithium ion battery pack, enabling up to 443 miles of range on Europe's optimistic WLTP testing cycle. 
The top GLC 404 Matic variant delivers 483 horsepower through dual electric motors, making it all-wheel drive, and it accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under 5 seconds. The new GLC Electric will have a rear two-speed transmission and front disconnect unit, which the brand says is for improved performance and efficiency, as well as a standard heat pump for efficient cabin heating and battery preconditioning on the way to a DC fast charger to enable optimal charging speeds. It will also include adjustable regenerative braking, including one pedal driving with recuperation up to 300 kilowatts. The American version of the model will include a North American charging system port with plug and charge capability that will be able to support up to 300 kilowatts, which Mercedes says can add approximately 188 miles of range in just 10 minutes. Route planning is included with specific features incorporated for Mercedes' own high-power charging network that will allow the vehicle to automatically make a reservation for a charging dispenser 15 minutes before reaching the charging station. A DC converter is equipped standard to also enable charging at 400 volt DC fast charging stations. The vehicle embodies Mercedes' updated design philosophy, featuring a front grille with optional illuminated pixels for dynamic animations. Digital vehicle key with keyless go feature enables proximity lock controls and driving operations without having to take your mobile phone or smartwatch out. The MBUX hyperscreen spans 39 inches across the whole dashboard and includes facial recognition for both the driver and passenger for custom profiles. The system includes the world's first in-car infotainment system to integrate artificial intelligence from both Microsoft and Google through their virtual assistant. It will also have standard Apple CarPlay. Advanced features like the optional Airmatic air suspension with navigation and car-to-x road condition awareness is designed to keep the vehicle in a lower riding position to optimize efficiency. The GLC Electric will also have rear axle steering up to 4.5 degrees and a starry sky control panoramic roof. The SUV also boasts a towing capacity of up to 5,291 pounds with the ability for the route planning to apply trailer information for more accurate range predictions. It will have motion detection to open the tailgate with access to 20.1 cubic feet of space and when the rear seats are folded down up to 61.4 cubic feet. Additionally, the front provides 4.5 cubic feet of cargo space. The vehicle will be built in Bremen, Germany, and availability in the U.S. market kicks off in the second half of 2026. As an aside, Mercedes says it will be the first time they will rely on Aptronic Apollo humanoid robots to assist in production tasks. BMW has already announced limited deployment of figure humanoids in U.S. manufacturing, and Tesla uses their Optimus bots. In China, Xping builds their P7 EV with their Iron Bot, and NIO uses their UBTEC Walker S for quality control tasks, while Xiaomi announced they'll be using their in-house Cyber One humanoid for EV production in 2026. As we mentioned in a previous episode of The Current when we were covering the AMG GTXX concept, Mercedes has now provided more firm dates in regards to a collaboration with charging equipment provider Alpatronic, stating they would incorporate their HYC1000 system, delivering up to 600 kilowatts per charging point starting in 2026. Despite their current sizable EV lineup and the news of more EV models from the brand, Mercedes has not sold enough EVs to meet EU emissions requirements this year. Their leadership has recently pleaded with regulators to relax combustion sales restrictions in Europe, including the 2035 ban, which currently is in place. Leaderships from several European automakers met with EU regulators on Friday each expressing their views on the matter. Mercedes is, however, making an effort to catch up. Last week, they signed an $11 billion deal with LG Energy Solutions for another 107 gigawatt hours of 46 millimeter cylindrical battery cells on top of last year's 50 gigawatt hour agreement for the US supply. Mercedes also renewed their commitment to 15 EV launches scheduled over the next two years. Out of the three German automakers who unveiled mid-size electric SUVs in the past couple of weeks, who do you think has executed it best? If you missed our overviews of the Porsche Cayenne EV and the BMW iX3, I'll link those episodes below.
Chinese-owned Swedish electric vehicle brand Polestar has officially launched its flagship Polestar 5, a four-door all-electric Grand Tourer. Evolving from the 2020 Precept concept, the Polestar 5 marks the brand's first vehicle built on its in-house Polestar Performance Architecture, or PPA, platform. The initial base model will come in a dual motor variant, delivering 748 horsepower and 599 pound-feet of torque, sprinting from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds, with an estimated WLTP range of 416 miles. The brand will also offer a performance launch edition which ups the ante to 884 horsepower and 749 pound-feet of torque, achieving 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.1 seconds, with a range of 351 miles on the WLTP testing cycle. Both models share a 106 kilowatt hour usable battery from Korean battery manufacturer SK On, an 800 volt architecture enabling up to 350 kilowatts of DC fast charging speeds and achieving 10 to 80 percent in about 22 minutes, and AC charging reaches up to 11 kilowatts for level two charging needs. Notable features include standard Google built in infotainment system, available MagnaRide adaptive dampers. 11 cameras, and a 9.5-inch head-up display. Like the Polestar 4 before it, the design ditches a traditional rear window in favor of a high-definition camera feed. Customer deliveries are slated for the first half of 2026 in initial markets, with Polestar confirming U.S. availability and pricing to be announced later. Pricing in Europe starts at €119,900, which converts to about $140,000 in US dollars. This latest reveal comes as Polestar recently issued a going concern warning with their financial disclosures. Auditors have expressed doubt about the company's ability to avoid bankruptcy, but Polestar's CEO has refuted the pessimism. Fisker, Nikola, Canu, and Arrival filed similar warnings within months of declaring bankruptcy. Polestar is owned by China's Geely, along with Lotus, which also filed a going concern warning in December of last year. Other brands with significant Geely ownership include Mercedes-Benz, Volvo, Zeker, and Smart. Hopefully, Polestar can survive this. There were many other concepts and launches at IAA, but unfortunately, I can't cover them all in this brief program. Now, limited information was provided for the Hyundai Concept 3 and the Volkswagen ID Cross concepts, but I'll report about those production versions when they are unveiled. CATL also announced some impressive new battery developments, and I'll link those in this video's description. I would like to thank the team at CATL for inviting me to report from IAA in Germany this week, and I really hope to make it next year. This week, I had already committed to spending time with Nissan North America in San Diego, California. It was truly a treat to be among the first journalists to experience the 2026 Nissan LEAF on the road. I spent a day behind the wheel and even had a chance to plug it into a Tesla supercharger. I will be publishing a detailed video on this channel next week. The long and short of it is, it's a very good value and it hits dealerships in just a few weeks. Be sure to subscribe for that. Well, those have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you subscribe and share this video online. If you'd like to keep this show independent and publishing weekly, we're accepting contributions from the thanks button right down here. We really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.